All right, it's Yalak here again, September 14th, 2016. I just did the video dealing with the Hebrew language, wondering what the real truth is about this Hebrew language. Um, that video entitled A Wandering Aramean, which I'm just about to edit, and just started to read this, so I thought I'd just do this little quick video. Um, just basically just reading what they got here from livius.org l-i-v-i-u-s dot o-r-g entitled Aramaeans it, listen to what it says here Aramaeans, the name of the Iron Age people living in what is now Syria their language became the lingua franca of the ancient Near East perhaps the Aramaeans are best understood as a group of city-states and semi-nomadic tribes from the Iron Age speaking related West Semitic languages or Shemitic languages in the era of what is now called Syria. They were certainly not the only inhabitants. Alright. They shared this region with people with Hittite ancestors who venerated the ancient Hittite gods continued Hittite artistic traditions and were also called Hittites or Neo-Hittites by modern scholars. Alright, so basically you got the people of Shem, the people connected with the Most High, and they're living there in this era, but they're not on their own. They've got other people around them, right? So they're in the midst of all of this. So what I'm trying to show you is, I mean, something that we, we already know, right? Like the Hebrew people were always around other people, right? Um, and they were always supposed to keep their instructions from the Most High, you know, separate um, from the other people in terms of not living by the teachings of other people, right? They're supposed to follow the Most High. So they got all these other people around them. And when you mention the Hittites being around them, hey, that's no fun day, right? It doesn't make for a fun day because, you know, Hittites, hey... Um, but so, so, so they're here. I, so that's what I'm telling you is that when I, when I wonder if the scrolls have really gone through some kind of tampering or changes prior to it being hidden, like in the Qumran caves to give us the modern quote unquote Bible that we have today. And the most I saying stuff like they've, the scribes have tampered with, you know, They've used their pen to trick us or whatever. You gotta wonder, with all these other nations around the people of the Messiah, around Israel, who hate Israel, right? And even before the nation was called Israel, the, the people of Shem before that, they were still around these other people. You, you mean, you got so many enemies all around you. And nobody's going to try to take them down, take down their book, take down their scrolls, try to tamper, do whatever, especially when they're going into captivities. Right? And it's not just, I mean, I mean, it's crazy. Sometimes we think that maybe if something was tampered with just a little bit, just to tweak it a little bit, to, you know, not major changes, just a little bit, probably. We usually think of the the, the the more famous captivities, right? But remember, Israel went into one captivity after another in the early part of the book of Judges, right? So even so, their, their I don't want to say legends, but their history could have been slightly um, tampered with as well in some ways, right? Which is the reason why when we're doing all this digging and searching, we gotta read and buy so many books. Going to the library so much trying to find out what this means and what that means and which country is that and was it this group of people and that group of people. Cause they might not necessarily have been targeting our laws, but even the very names of the people or the history of where they went and at what time period they were here or there. And sometimes it might not have been some tampering or hiding of information of where we went and who was there, but which other nation around them was there at that time to confuse us, right?
So, so I'm telling you, a lot of changes must have happened. Remember Psalms 83 says that the name of Israel might be no more. This has to be a dedicated, um, concerted effort by different nations, different groups of people that hated Israel. Right? To have been working together for so, so long to make just a, 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 as confusing as ever a case of our history and our laws and so on, but make it still look good enough as if it has not been tampered with. I'm telling you, I don't know how to show it fully, but I'm I'm getting there eventually, right? There, there must be. There's no way you can tell me we got so many palms deciding what is true, what is correct. One person saying this, one person teaching that, one camp saying this, another camp saying that, one Christian pastor saying this, one Christian pastor. And sometimes I know we, we, we're not the Christian pastors, we're not, even I myself a lot, right? Especially with my New Testament series, but but the reality is that New Testament pastors, some of them are our own people, and even those who are not, they're looking at, at the Bible still, they're, they're trying to find out what is true. It's just that they've been deceived, probably more deceived than us, and, and you know, but, but they're still trying to figure stuff out, right? But, um, yeah, I don't know, all these people around, around, uh, Israel or the people of Shem, but it goes on here, the Aramaeans have their, origin in the collapse of the old Bronze Age system in the first half of the 12th century BCE. Syria, which had been part of the Hittite Empire, witnessed the rise of several new political entities where people spoke Aramaic. This is the main part now. A language related to Phoenician and Hebrew. You see what I'm saying? As you keep studying and looking into this, you wonder where did this Hebrew, modern Hebrew, we've got in our Bible, looking at the back of our Bible in the Concordance and Strong's Concordance and all. Where do we get that from, this Hebrew from? That we rely on this cure-all, fix-all Hebrew language in the in our Strong's Concordance and the lexicons and so on. Could there be a limitation of our knowledge based on a limitation of the so-called Hebrew language that we're presented with? Telling us that that is the original language? Are we being limited in our studies and searching and trying to figure out stuff because we're using Hebrew? Are we? So you get a brother, a, I mean, a, a real good, well-to-do brother running a camp. And he teaches something five years ago. Good, good message. And somebody has come five years later and says, no, that's not it, and start to tell something different and looking at the same word. Could it be our problem is with the actual language we're relying on, this Hebrew? You can't tell me that there's so much discrepancy, so much problems, everybody is having something different. And the language is about unity? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. We, we know it, but I'm still gonna read it. Just, yeah. Cause, I mean, I'm, I'm wondering, like those of us who are more skilled at this stuff, cause like I keep saying, I'm new studying this Old Testament stuff. And, uh, you know, I can only say so much, but at least I'm trying to spark something in somebody's mind who can more pick this up and, you know, shed some more light on it. But we know Zephaniah 3 9, for then will I turn to the people a pure language that they may call, that they may all call upon the, ah, uh, I see that. Me reading it so fast, and I, I've read this verse so many times, but I read that they may call, that they may call, and I, I realized, no, I missed a word, that they may all call, is what it says, right? So it's like if you're just reading that so fast in the English and I'm, I'm slipping a word, what if this modern Hebrew we have in our Bibles and in our Strong's Concordances that we're looking at, it's good to give us the whole general picture of the Hebrew life and culture and history and what the most size laws are about and so on. But what if there are places here and there, just a little bit, I'm not saying major like 50% of the book or anything, just a little bit here and there. What if the Hebrew that we're using is just faulty enough to just miss a word? Like how I just missed all and was trying to say call when it should have been all call. Right? What if it's just not adequate, not sufficient enough because it was not the real language? 
But we're just presented with it in modern times. The same way we're presented in modern times with all kinds of different stuff about everything in this new world. Right? So I don't know, but it says that they may all call upon the name of the Most High to serve Him with one consent. Now, are you telling me we got one consent when one camp is saying this and one is saying that? I'm saying this and somebody says that? We say this and the Christian pastors say that? Obviously, there's a, a one consent that is kind of absent here from us now, right? And so we continue to study and teach and do our best. And the best of us are studying right? Best of us. And the ones who are doing that much studying, you know, I mean, you should be encouraged to study some more by listening to things like this, right? And if you can't study as much as the next person, do what you can. Slip in an extra few minutes whenever you can, right? Um, so yeah, with one consent. So so it seems that the language, when it is pure, then we can all call. I mean togetherness now, with and serve him as well with one consent. So the language has some kind of a power to it. The real language. It is difficult for me to understand that we've got the real language here, the real Hebrew, the original language that our people spoke in ancient times and we aren't all calling with one consent and we aren't seeing eye to eye sometimes we're arguing and fighting so much you wonder if some physical fight's going to start out I'm like oh goodness man you know but that's just how we talk it away <laughs> but um, yeah yes I mean I hope you see the point here so I'm not going to make this one long but it says where people spoke Aramaic a language related to Phoenician and Hebrew when we look at our concordances you know, it's telling you the Chaldean or Phoenician Hebrew and all that. But this is saying here, the Aramaic is related to. It's not saying that it is. So then they're saying here, Aramaic is related to Hebrew. Not that it is. Which is what I started out thinking. And by reading and searching more, I'm finding out some more things, right? Their names suggest a tribal nature, nature right? Okay, yeah, so I don't need any more, but, but, at least you see, I'm trying to show that there seems to have been some real difference between Aramaic and Hebrew, although there were, would have been Semitic, Shemitic languages. But I, I'm just suggesting that because initially I was taught that Aramaic is Hebrew, but I'm finding that there are some differences, right? Enough to say that these are separate tongues, right? Um, yeah, so, I mean, keep studying, keep studying, I guess.